Hey everybody, let's take a look at two things. Oh, bad, 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 bad chapter title. We're going to erase this. You will, you will erase this from your mind. You don't need to see his identification. This isn't the, this isn't the title you're looking for. Move along. Okay. Not complex fractions, uh, uh, thrilling fractions. There we go. Okay, we'll, we'll fix that little thing there. Okay, well, let's first off, what's the rule for dividing fractions? In other words, if you go three eighths divided by five sevenths, what's the rule? You know the rule, right? You're just gonna go, okay, that's gonna be three eighths, and I'll multiply, and then I'll flip the second one and go straight across, and then boom, you can, you know, kind of, if you can cancel out first, go ahead and do that first. Well, if it works for numbers, then it works for X's and A's and all that kind of jazz. So that's what we're going to do with just uh, algebraic fractions instead. So look at pause and copy this. And basically this is a fraction and we're dividing it by this fraction. So the rule is, we just saw what the rule is with regular fractions. So we just do exactly the same thing. So instead of dividing by this over B, we're going to multiply by B over X plus Y. And the simplest thing to do, just like you would in normal fractions, is to go, oh, I'm canceling my B's out. I got an A, I got an X plus Y, I got rhythm, I got music, I got my girl who can ask for anything more. Okay, let's look at 28.2. Pause and copy, same kind of thing here. Well, you probably recognize this thing. You go, oh, well that has the same denominator, they both do. Okay, because this is being divided by that, which means you got this, you got your C on the bottom, you got A plus B on top, you got, that goes away. Then you have A in the numerator and C in the denominator. That's all there is to it. Piece of cake. Okay. All right. Let's look at a different type of fraction. And this part of the chapter is called rationalizing the denominator. Well, we know what a denominator is. Okay. Rationalizing a denominator? What the heck does that mean? Well, we've talked about rational numbers before. A rational number is just a fraction, right? Anything you can write as a fraction, like, you know, three-fourths, that's a rational number. If you wrote five, that's a rational number because you can express it as a fraction, right? Five over one, okay? Well, there are two main types that we deal with this year of irrational numbers in algebra two. And one is the square root of some number like, I don't know, uh, you know, seven, that doesn't give you a perfect integer answer. In other words, this is the square root of nine, well, that's three, that's a rational number. So that doesn't count. This, not a rational number. And it's generally accepted as a practice not to put irrational numbers like square roots into denominators. The other basic, the other main type of irrational number that we mess with this year a lot is pi. So, which means a rational number is, you know, can be expressed as a fraction. And really quickly, just so you'll know, uh, a rational number, uh, like let's say three fourths, if you were to do that and express it as a decimal, you would be it'd be 0.75. All right. If you did some other fraction, like let's say uh, one third, well, that would be 0.3333. You would just, it'd be repeating decimal. Every single fraction on earth either terminates, they call that a terminating decimal. It stops if you divide it out or it repeats. Now it doesn't always repeat with one number. Let's say you have, mm, I don't know, let's think of, uh, how about one ninth? Oh no, that's not a good one. How about, uh, I don't know, how about five thirteenths? That will give you this number, 0.384615. And then it starts repeating. So all six of those numbers repeat, those digits repeat. That's a rational number. So we're going to turn, in other words, by rationalizing the denominator, we're going to turn denominators into numbers that are not square roots because square roots are not rational numbers. All right. So let's go ahead and cop, pause and copy. And we're going to turn this into a rational number, which means we're going to get rid of the square root. And the way we do this is to basically, we just follow an old rule. If the old rule is this, and we don't, don't, you don't have to write this down, but this is basically what we're doing. When you have something like one half, and when you were a kid, they said, oh, turn this into a fraction that has a 10 at the bottom. So you went, okay, wait a second. I multiplied two by five to get 10. So I'm gonna multiply the top by five and that gives me five. Oh, there's my answer. Now five tenths, 
is the same thing as one half. It just looks different, right? That's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to take something and do it to the denominator and then copy that to the numerator. And that's all we need to do. So what we need to do to the denominator to get rid of that square root of 5 is just simply multiply again by the square root of 5. <coughs> now I'll show you what happens. So since we did that to the bottom, we do it to the top. We don't care if the numerator is irrational. So we get a 3 times the square root of 5 in the numerator. The denominator, let's do this over here. We get 2 square root of 5 times the square root of 5, which is, you know, is the square root of 25. Well, we know the square root of 25, that's just 5, right? So 2 times 5 is our answer, 10, and that is how we do it. Boom. All right, piece of cake. Let's try another one. Simplify this, go ahead and pause and copy. All right, well, there's two things you can do. You can look at that 12 and go, hmm, I can, I can break that down into a 4 and a 3 and then pull the 4 out. You can do that if you want to. Or if you'd like to, just, you can just go ahead and just multiply the top and the bottom by square root of 12 to clean that out, and then we'll do that at the very uh, end. So multiply by the square root of 12. Multiply by the square root of 12. Notice you, do not, you don't have to multiply by 3. 3 is, an, is, a, is a rational number, so you're good with that. Okay, so the top turns into 2 square root of 12. The bottom turns into 3 times the square root of 144, or just 12, right? So that's 3 times 12, 36. All right, and let's take a look at the 12 now. Let's go ahead and replace the 12. You should be able to do this in your head. It's small enough where you should be able to. You look at the 12 and you say, okay, well, this is four times three inside there. Well, the four, square root of four, goes out there and becomes a two. So two times two is four. Square root of three is the only thing that's left on top. Then you have a 36. You always have to look on these to see if you can reduce these just like normal fractions. Don't try to reduce this part. Just look at this part here as if it were a fraction, and it is a fraction. Well, 4 over 36 is the same thing as 1 ninth. So you can just keep your square root of 3 here. You don't have to write a 1 by it. You can if you want to. And then there's a 9 down there, and that is a new fraction which has a rational number, 9, as a denominator. And you got it. That's all you need to do. Okay. Okay. Let's give uh, A a whirl, and, and let's try A and B, and then come back when we finish with A and B. All right. Pause it. All right, this is a piece of cake. You just multiply by the reciprocal P over Z plus X. And of course, that goes. You have M over Z plus X, and there you go. Same thing for B, and you can, if you, can, if you want to, you don't even have to do what I'm doing. When you, see, when you recognize this, you don't have to go, oh, that's gonna be X plus Y on top, and then Z on the bottom, and I can do, just write, I got it, it's M over Z. And then go to the next one. That's at least a couple of problems in your problem set that'll be like lightning fast. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and do um, C. Pause it and try C. All right, and again, don't forget, you don't have to do three. You know, if you were to do three, square root of two on the bottom and the top, I mean, you know, it would be fine. You just have to reduce the fraction at the very end, but all you need to do is just the square root of two. So square root of two there, square root of two there. So that's gonna be four times the square root of two. This will be, let's think about this. Square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is just 2, right? So 3 times 2 is 6. This will be 6. But don't forget one last thing. What is it? You tell me. We're good. This is a rational number. 6 is. But what's the last thing we need to do here? We need to reduce that. Okay. 4 6 reduces to 2 thirds. So the 4 turns into a 2. The 6 turns into a 3. And there she blows. Okay. That's it. All right. You guys have a great day. See you next time, and uh, do a good job on that problem set today.